This is Trek Zone's That Time When. Olivia Diabo was a teenage Q in season six of TNG, but has since gone on to be a prolific guest star and voice actor. She's chatting with me today on our final STLV 2019 interview. Now in its seventh year of podcasting, this is Trek Zone's Vegas or Bus Tour with your host, Matt Miller. Well, welcome to a Trek Zone conversation, continuing STLV coverage uh, throughout August. And I'm here with the lovely Olivia Diabo. Olivia, welcome to Trek Zone. I'm so excited to be here with you and, uh, and uh, hear your lovely Australian accent, which it yeah. always uh, has a lovely ring to it. <laughs> well, thank you. I yes. do believe that you have a bit of an Australian connection with some of your acting uh, in... Uh, Law and in Order. Criminal Intent. Criminal I was going to say Special Victims Unit, but of course yes, it was Criminal but that, Intent. but that's sort of one of about nine shows, right? I, 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 Law and Order, Criminal Intent. Yes, I played Nicole Wallace. Or uh, should I say I played Nicole Wallace. Um, and... Funnily enough, we were just talking about this. She was written as an Australian woman who spent a, 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 um, a substantial amount of time in a Thailand prison. That um, she was taught her Svengali, her sort of trainer, um, mastermind, was uh, played by um, Michael York, who was in one of the episodes after the Nicole Wallace and Goran story sort of panned out and people knew who she was and a lot about her character but then I think there was people were intrigued by who taught her to be this sociopath kind of character who keeps reinventing herself so he sort of taught me how to do that but anyway they they did have a, a show where I live and I die and I believe in Australia they killed me off but every other country I got to live and maybe it's because they were like oh this silly Wally let's kill her off you know <laughs> well your, she, your your acting work has spanned so many genres um, a few times in sci-fi uh, of course Trek will know you from uh, the episode so true Q, yes. working opposite John Delancey. Yes. Uh, now, we were in the panel earlier today uh, about that experience, but just tell the Trexone audience what that was like to work opposite John Delancey and, and really have that dichotomy with him. Yes. I mean, not unlike uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and my character on Law and Order, there was a tete-a-tete between them. Um, slightly different dynamic because uh, Vincent and I were more like contemporaries. So when I did the show way back when, um, I, I believe, God, I must have been early, early 20s, but I was playing, a, you know, late teens. And I was playing an orphan, Amanda Rogers, who is the apprentice um, on the ship of, of, of pretty much the entire crew and, and Picard, Captain Picard. And John Delancey is also there to sort of sway me in the direction that he feels is right for me. But ultimately, my character has to make her own choices about what she does with her omnipotent power, basically whether I go to the darkness or the light. And as we know, for those of you who've watched the show, uh, I end up saving a planet. So. I learn as I develop my skills, um, which has a lot to do with, with Q, um, instilling those and teaching me, um, I do decide to go toward the more positive uh, uh, way uh, of being using my powers. But yeah, it was great to work with John, and funnily enough, he warned me Year, years ago, you know, that the, the, a day would come where we would be in Ireland or Germany or wherever and that people would still remember this episode and that we would be part of Star Trek history. And I said, really, John, from one episode? I find that hard to believe. He goes, oh, no, you wait. You wait. You, the shoe will drop. The day will come. And, and he was so right. Right. 